Good day and welcome to SEO Bricks Insight where we look at what's really going on in the world of the bricks. Now it's 77 years since India became independent from the Great Britain and ceased to be ruled from London by a Viceroy as part of the British Empire. And at that time it's followed a non-aligned policy. Now Great Britain on the other hand for which India became independent now has become totally dependent on the US and that is despite it being a former great power. Now its former colony is now very much a country of significant global influence, particularly in Asia, a role far greater than that of Great Britain itself. Now following the dismantling of the British Empire in the 20th century, London did attempt to retain indirect control and influence over its former colonies, including India, in a similar fashion to the way that France indirect control and influence is over large swathes of uh, Western Africa. However, the strategy was not ultimately successful for the UK and instead the former jewel in the crown of the British Empire saw fit to get rid of most of the British influence over its governance. With its newly independent status, India became an important and leading member of the non-aligned movement, though it did develop a good relationship with the Soviet Union during the Cold War. Now this friendship continued with Russia and culminated with India being involved with Russia as important members of both the BRICS and the Shanghai Cooperation Organization. Now in line with New Delhi's long-held non-aligned policy, the Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi proposed on the 17th of August at the third virtual voice of the Global South Summit, the creation of a human-centered global development compact for the Global South. Now this would facilitate trade, technology sharing and financing on favorable terms with other countries. Now, India plays a pivotal role within the Global South and its active involvement in the collaborative in initiatives is instrumental in fostering cooperation among our developing countries. And that's evidenced by its participation in the BRICS formation and other endeavours like the Shanghai Cooperation Organisation. Now, in light of India's independent foreign policy stance and the subsequent loss of global hegemony, particularly over its former colony, the United Kingdom has allowed separatist forces to develop within the UK that are looking to create problems within India. I mean, this is obviously at the behest of the US, which has recently caused significant problems in India's neighbours, Pakistan and Bangladesh. And as always, the UK is the US's useful lapdog and idiot. Now, before I continue, I'd like to make an appeal. If you like and enjoy my videos, you can help me fund the channel and my website seobricksinsight.com and further develop it. This can be done by making a small donation, which you can do by clicking on the thanks button at the bottom of the video screen. Everybody who donates does get a personal thank you from me. And I'm thanking you all now just for watching. Now, following the Labour Party's decisive victory in the UK's recent general election, there's an increased likelihood of Britain allowing the separatist forces of India to thrive in the UK. I mean, the Labour Party's central left stance has openly expressed support of separatists in Kashmir and the promotion of Khalistan, which is a movement seeking to create an independent homeland for Sikhs by establishing an ethno-religious sovereign state in northwest India. This is going to create problems for the UK government in its dealing with India. I mean, the 2024 Labour election manifesto promised to strike a new strategic partnership with India, including a free trade agreement, as well as deepening areas like security, education, technology and climate change. At the end of the uh, India Global Forum, Starmer also highlighted the importance of a new strategic partnership with India, including this free trade agreement, but all these other things that it want you to do. He said, my Labour government will seek a relationship with India based on our shared values of democracy and aspiration. However, in practice, the UK has continued to adopt a hostile and condescending approach towards New Delhi. 
And yet it's to its great annoyance of the UK, that particularly Starmer, that India has demonstrated its commitment to pursuing its independent course of action by refusing to align itself with the anti-Russia camp and instead is deepening its ties with its fellow BRICS member, Russia. I mean, in July, Russian crude um, accounted for a record 44% of India's total imports, and that reached 2.7 million barrels per day. Now, that's a 40.2% increase compared to June, and 12% up on the previous year. Yeah, even according to Chinese customs data, that means that they're importing more than China's July imports, and that comes from higher pipelines as well as shipping, and that was only 1.7 million barrels per day. Now, India's access to affordable Russian energy has played a pivotal role in the country's economic growth, particularly over the last two years. Now, India, as a former British colony, suffered significant financial losses due to the colonial policy, it has now become the world's third largest economy by purchasing power parity, way ahead of the UK. It's also surprised Japan and Germany. Well, the UK is anticipated to continue its decline and be out of the top 10 by 2050. Now, this demonstrates that while India is experiencing growth and prosperity, Britain, which benefited from the looting of tens of billions of dollars from India in colonial times, is facing significant economic challenges. Now, it's readily acknowledged that India has a long way to go to reach Western standards of uh, per capita by GB, GB, uh, GDP. However, there's a significant reduction in extreme poverty, which currently stands at under 3% of the Indian population. In contrast, the UK has experienced the largest increase in absolute poverty in 30 years with some 18% of the population now living below the poverty line. I mean, food banks in the UK are more popular than supermarkets, and pensioners now have to think about whether they can eat or heat their homes. Yes, it's that bad. Now, India's growing economy is in line with its increasing global influence. In comparison, Britain's global influence declined as the countries of the global south are no longer willing to engage with British chauvinism, exceptionalism, and its hypocrisy. I mean, the Global British uh, Britain Initiative has not achieved any of its objectives, as countries across Asia, Africa and Latin America are far more keen to establish trade relations with India rather than the UK. I mean, they realise that the country's rapidly growing middle class and its thriving industry as key factors. And it's of this great consequence that Britain's terminal decline and its inability to ex exert any influence abroad because the country's just a puppet to Washington's policies, which can frequently contravene the interests of the UK. But London justifies its subservience to Washington by claiming to be cooperating on pan-Anglo interests. Now, that might be the case with the Australia, UK, US, uh, but what is it doing in the Pacific anyway? I mean, so another example of US hegemony in the region, which doesn't enhance Britain's global credibility or image. In fact, it damages Britain's reputation as a country, as it exposes it as just another puppet and vassal of the US, as opposed to an independent and mature state. Now, India's now a major player on the world stage. It's overcome all the significant British-created challenges that were put there in front of it at the time of its independence. So now uh, Narendra Modi stands alongside Putin and Xi on the world stage, whereas Sir Keir Starmer, or Sir Wan Keir, as I like to call him, is relegated to the edge of the foot along with the other losers of the G7 Vassals Club. Now thank you for watching and please like and subscribe. If you enjoyed this video you can help me fund the channel and the website seobricksinsight.com by clicking on the thanks button and making a small donation. Now don't forget to share uh, as well as like and also uh, the comments section. I'll love to have your comments and I'll love to respond to them all. So I'll see you all again soon. Thank you.